Well, hello. How y'all doing today? Today is Sunday, October 28th, 2018. We're here to do some Bible study, gang. Um, we're going to start our adventure today in 2 Kings. Yeah, there's probably going to be some genealogy there. Hope you stick with me. Hope you don't just turn off this video and turn on the TV. Stick with me, folks. All right. Everything that is happening in our world, everything, everything that's going on in our world is right here. Right here. This is where it's all at. Everything that's going on in our world is right here. I know there's a lot. I know there's a lot of people that don't believe in God. I know there's a lot of people that don't accept Jesus as their Savior. I know there's a lot of people that give Al Gore a lot of praise. I know there's a lot of people that give Donald J. Trump a lot of praise. God, Jesus Christ, is the only one that deserves any kind of praise. We've been through quite a bit of the Bible. I've had this YouTube channel now for well over three years. We've gone through quite a bit of the Bible. If you go back, you on YouTube can't do it on Real Dot Video or Bright Brighteon. Is that what it's called now? Brighteon. Can't do it on Brighteon because we don't have playlists yet. But you can do it on YouTube. Go into the play playlists. Look at all the books that we've covered. Quite a few. Quite a few. Everything that's going on in our world right now is biblical. We're coming to the end times. We're in the end times. We're starting to see a lot of judgment there's some serious judgment coming down on the world. And a lot of lies and a lot of deception. Now, I know I'm not going to make a lot of friends here. But you know what? Whatever. Nobody watches these videos anyway. So if I trigger somebody, I guess you're triggered. Bummer. Gang, this is serious. It's legal for the government to lie to us. Obama had a had a, a, a an act that was repealed. Oh, I wish I could remember the act. Stupid me. I'll have to write it in the comments. After the video, I'll look it up and we'll put it in the comments, okay? This act prevented the government from feeding us propaganda lies. And Obama repealed it. So they could lie to us. Tell us whatever they want us to tell it. And you know what? Most of our society has taken it hook, line, and sinker. Y'all must love being lied to. You must love it. Heck, turn on the TV. Hey, Mabel, bring me a beer. Where's the remote? I'm going to sit here and watch the nightly news. Yeah, well, guess what? You've been lied to. The nightly news is full of it. Lies, lies, lies. As they create their own narrative. Nah, you're not going to believe me. Who am I? I'm nobody. I'm just a guy who reads the Bible. That's it. I got a computer. I put my word out. I make videos. Put God's word out. I make videos. Ain't my word. It's God's. So who am I? I'm nobody. But at least I don't like being lied to. At least I expose the corruption. At least I try to bring you the truth of what's going on. But you know what? I don't think anybody can handle it. They don't want to know. It's easier to live in a bubble than to know what's really going on. To believe the lies, the 
the corruption, the deception that the mainstream media feeds you, you just eat it up. Just eat it up. Because the only thing that you're concerned about is whatever's happening at work, because you spend 60 hours a week there to try to make a living. But when you're home and you're on, you got your own time. Instead of researching this stuff, instead of finding out the truth, instead of listening to the Bible studies and finding out the truth, you'd rather sit in front of the TV and have somebody lie to you, feed you lies, blow smoke up your honey. Must like it. Must feel real good. Goes right along with the sodomy. Yeah, they like things in their hiney too. Pretty sad. Well, I think by now I've pretty much made everybody mad. But you know what? I don't care. I ain't here to tickle your ears. I ain't here to make you feel good. I ain't here to blow smoke up your butt. I'm here to tell you the truth. Whether you like it or not, I don't care. I don't care. The Lord has assigned me this task. This is my calling for now. To read his word to the people. To try to tell the truth about what's happening. There's going to be a long line of people on Judgment Day going to hell because nobody wants to listen. Oh, I'm triggered. I'm triggered. I can't stand what you're saying. You need to be censored. Ah, censor him. Censor him. I don't care if you censor me or not. Take me off of YouTube. Who cares? I'm established on other platforms. As a matter of fact, I get better views on other platforms than I do here on YouTube because I'm so censored. Brighteon's up and coming. Mike Adams has got all kinds of good things going on there. And eventually, I'll be able to leave YouTube. And I'll be able to let the stupid dog and pet tricks happen because I won't care matter of fact my last video will probably be stupid pet tricks just so I can end on an up note but I gotta wait for a while I gotta wait until Brideon is completely established and I've got a base going on over there so I can leave this platform unless they shut me down right now they got me so censored I only got one view Either that or people just can't handle the truth. They don't want to hear the Bible. Oh, that might trigger them too. <laughs> the thought that there might be a creator. Oh, what happened to the trees? The aliens. Oh, the aliens brought us here. Fool. Fool. No. God created you. God created everything. God created everything and Jesus died for your sins. Not Al Gore. Not Muhammad. Not Allah. Nope. Nope. Wasn't even Buddha. Jesus. That's it whether you want to believe it or not. I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to help you to save yourself. Because if you don't repent, if you don't ask God for forgiveness for your sins, if you don't form a relationship with Jesus Christ, and if you don't prepare, you're going to be starving Thirsty, no faith, be praying to trees and rocks, they ain't going to help you. And when you're done starved to death or 
the government shows up and puts a bullet in you. Then when you show up in front of Jesus, you haven't done any of those things. Jesus is going to say, I never knew you. Next! You're on your way to hell. All because you didn't want to get triggered. All because you didn't want to listen to a half-hour Bible study twice a week. Too busy. That remote control and that TV was just too important. Well, now that you're standing in line to go to hell, who's got the remote? You going to get triggered now? Going to start jumping up and down and having a fit, asking for your Play-Doh, your puppy, and uh, your, your binky? I'm triggered. Satan's going to laugh at you. He's going to stick a pitchfork in your butt, set you on fire, and throw you in a hole. There you go. Have some trigger. Enjoy that trigger. Now you're in hell for all eternity because TV was too important. You didn't want to get triggered. You don't want to hear about the chemtrails. I don't want to, I don't want to see them. I don't want to hear about them. Ah, don't show me. Don't show me. Well, if you're sitting in hell for all eternity, you're going to have plenty of time to be triggered. I don't know what to tell you. Don't know what to tell you. All I can tell you is you better get your friends together. You better get your family together. And you better get situated. You better start studying on what's going on, what's real, and what's a lie. All right, gang. I'm done. I'm done. Done ranting. If you're foolish enough, and I state foolish because it's very foolish. If you're foolish enough to go along with the norm, not find out what God expects of us, not find out the truth, you deserve what you get. So does this country. Fire and brimstone, gang. Woo. Judgment. Anyway, grab your Bible. Got a nice cup of coffee sitting here. Big jug of water on the floor. Grab your Bible. And we're going to turn to 2 Kings. Okay. Let's see how much we can get done here now that I've had my little rant for the day. If you're not ready, or if you're triggered, stop the video and catch up with us. If you're interested in saving yourself, you're going to have to ask God for forgiveness if you want to be saved. He's the only one that can save us. The love of Jesus Christ, only thing that can save us. Donald J. Trump ain't going to save you. All these politicians, these pastors, these pastors are hilarious. This false flag that they had yesterday, that shooting that was at the synagogue. What a perfect name. What a perfect name for it. And on the Sabbath. Wow. Couldn't have set that false flag up any better, huh? The shooter is even an actor. <laughs> Think anybody really died? I wonder. I wonder. I pray for those souls if they did. If anyone was killed yesterday in that synagogue, I'm very sorry for their family. I'm very sorry for what they have to go through. I'm hoping that your loved ones were saved. If they're saved, hey, they went home. That's a good thing. If they're Messianic Jews... Good chance that they just went home. Depends. Anyway, 
The Second Book of the Kings, Chapter 1. Then Moab rebelled against Israel after the death of Ahab, and Azahiah fell down under fell down through a lattice in his upper chamber that was Samaria, and was sick. And he sent messengers and said unto them, Go, inquire of Bezalbub, the god of Ekron, whether I shall recover of this disease. So <laughs> Ahiazai, Ahi, Ahi, Ahiaziah, Fell sick. He was in Samaria. And instead of asking God what he should do, he automatically went straight to Beelzebub, to Satan. Verse 3. But the angel of the Lord said to Elijah, the Tishbit, Arise, go up to meet the messengers of the king of Samaria, and say unto them, Is it not because there is not a god in Israel that ye go to inquire of Beelzebub, the god of Ekron? <laughs> An angel of the Lord. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> You're going to go talk to Satan because you guys have rejected God, huh? Verse 4. Now therefore thus saith the Lord, Thou shalt not come down from that bed on which thou art gone up, but shalt surely die. And Elijah departed. And when the messengers turned back unto him, he said unto them, Why are ye now turned back? And they said unto him, There came a man up to meet us, and said unto us, Go, turn again unto the king that sent you, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Is it not because there is not a God in Israel that thou sent, sentest to inquire of Beelzebub, the god of Ekron? Therefore thou shalt not come down from that bed on which thou art gone up, but shalt surely die. Verse 7, And he said unto them, What manner of man was he which came up to meet you and told you these words? And they answered him, He was a hairy man and girt with a girdle of leather about his loins. And he said, it is Elijah the Tishbit. Then the king sent unto him a captain of fifty with his fifty. And he went up to him, and behold, he sat on the top of a hill. And he spake unto him, Thou man of God, the king hath said, Come down. And Elijah answered and said to the captain of fifty, If I be a man of God, then let fire come down from heaven and consume thee and thy fifty. And there came down fire from heaven, and it consumed him and his fifty. Again also he sent unto him another captain of fifty with his fifty. And he answered and said unto him, O man of God, Thus hath the king said, Come down quickly. <laughs> Verse 12. And Elijah answered and said unto them, If I be a man of God, let fire come down from heaven and consume thee and thy fifty. And the fire of God came down from heaven and consumed him and his fifty. Well, so much for the first hundred that came to get Elijah. Think they knew that the last guys got burned up? <laughs> Verse 13. And he sent again a captain of the third 50 with his 50. 
And the third captain of fifty went up and came and fell on his knees before Elijah and besought him and said unto him, a little different this time, O man of God, I pray thee, let my life and the life of these fifty, thy servants, be precious in thy sight. Please don't have God burn us up. Verse 14. Behold, there came fire down from heaven and burnt up the two captains of the former fifties with their fifties. Therefore let my life now be precious in thy sight. And the angel of the Lord said unto Elijah, Go down with him. Be not afraid of him. And he arose and went down with him unto the king. And he said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Forasmuch as thou hast sent messengers to inquire of Beelzebub, the god of Ekron, is it not because there is no god in Israel to inquire of his word? Therefore thou shalt not come down off that bed on which thou art gone up, but shalt surely die. So he did according to the word of the Lord, which Elijah had spoken. And Jehoram reigned in his stead in the second year of Jehoram, the son of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, because he had no son. Now the rest of the acts of Ahaziah, which he did, are not they not written in the book of Chronicles of the kings of Israel? Chapter 2. And it came to pass when the Lord would take up Elijah into heaven by a whirlwind that Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgal. Now notice what that says. That's pretty important. That first verse in chapter 2 is very important. Let's read it again, okay? And it came to pass when the Lord would take up Elijah. Elijah didn't die. The Lord took him up. Okay? That's why they say that the two prophets in Revelation are probably going to be Elijah and Moses. Let's reread this. Verse 1, chapter 2. And it came to pass when the Lord would take up Elijah into heaven by a whirlwind that Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgal. And Elijah said to, unto Elisha, Tarry here, I pray thee, for the Lord hath sent me to Bethel, and Elisha said unto him, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they went down to Bethel. And the sons of the prophets that were at Bethel came forth to Elisha, and said unto him, Knowest that thou that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head today? And he said, Yea, I know it. Hold ye your peace. Chill out. I already know what's going to happen. It's okay. Verse 4. And Elijah said unto him, Elisha, tarry here, I pray thee, for the Lord hath sent me to Jericho. And he said, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they came to Jericho. And the sons of the prophets that were at Jericho came to Elisha and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head today? And he answered, Yea, I know it. Hold your peace. Verse 6. 
And Elijah said unto him, Tarry, I pray thee, hear, for the Lord hath sent me to Jordan. And he said, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. And the two went on. And fifty men of the sons of the prophets went, and stood to view afar off, and they too stood by Jordan. And Elijah took his mantle, and wrapped it together, and smote the waters, and they were divided hither and thither, so that they too went over on dry ground. And it came to pass, when they were gone over, that Elijah said unto Elisha, Ask what I shall do for thee, before I be taken away from thee. And Elisha said, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. You respected him a lot. A lot. There was a serious respect there. Verse 10, and he said, Thou hast asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if thou see me when I am taken from thee, it shall be so unto thee. But if not, it shall not be so. And it came to pass, as they still went on and talked, that, behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire, and parted them both asunder, and Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. Wow, what a sight that would have been to be walking along with Elijah. Do, 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 we're going to Jordan, talking and kicking stones and having a good time. All of a sudden, out of the sky comes a fiery chariot with fiery horses comes flying right between where the two of you are standing and Elijah is gone. <laughs> That's pretty intense. That's pretty intense. Verse 12, And when Elisha saw it, and he cried, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel, and the horsemen thereof, and he saw him no more. And he took hold of his own clothes and rent them into pieces. He tore his clothes. He took up also the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and went back and stood by the bank of Jordan. And he took the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and smote the water and said, Where is the Lord God of Elijah? And when he also had smitten the waters, they parted hither and thither. And Elisha went over. And when the sons of the prophets which were to view at Jericho saw him, they said, The spirit of Elijah doth rest on Elisha. And they came to meet him, and bowed themselves to the ground before him. And they said unto him, Behold, now there be with thy servants fifty strong men. Let them go. We pray thee, and seek thy master. Least preadventure the spirit of the Lord hath taken him up and cast him upon some mountain or into some valley. And he said, Ye shall not send. And when they urged him till he was ashamed, he said, Send. They sent, therefore, fifty men, and they sought three days, but found him not. And when they came again to him, for he tarried at Jericho, he said unto them, did I not say unto you, Go not? And the men of the city said unto Elisha, Behold, I pray thee, the situation of this city is pleasant, as my Lord seeth, but the water is not, and the ground barren. Very little faith. Very little faith that here they had witnessed Elijah go up in a fiery, a fiery chariot with a fiery horse. But they still wouldn't believe. They still had to go look. Verse 20, and he said, Bring me a new cruise, and put salt therein, 
and they brought it to him. And he went forth unto the spring of the waters, and cast the salt in there, and said, Thus saith the Lord, I have healed these waters. There shall not be from thence any more death or barren land. So the waters were healed unto this day, according to the saying of Elisha, which he spake. And he went up from thence unto Bethel, and he was going up by the way. There came forth little children out of the city, and mocked him, and said unto him, Go up, thou bald head, go up, thou bald head. And he turned back and looked on them, and cursed them in the name of the Lord. And there came forth two she-bears out of the wood, and tarry forth, and two children of them. And he went from thence to Mount Carmel, and from thence he returned to Samaria. So it seems to me like he cursed him in the name of the Lord, and two bears came out of the woods and took out the kids. They tore forty and two children from them. So the bears, they went off pretty good. Hmm. Don't mess with Alicia. All right, gang. I'm going to stop there. We'll continue chapter three on Wednesday. All right. I think that we've gotten enough into this today. We got to start. All right. Gang, there's hard times coming. There's real hard times coming. We have an invasion force coming up from Central America that's going to hit our border in the next few days. There's going to be 100,000 of them, at least. The media is lying to you when they tell you there's only you know, four or 5,000. They're lying. When they came through the Guatemala-Mexican border, there was at least 40,000 people. Now their numbers have increased. And they're picking up people along the way. When they hit the United States border, there's going to be 100,000 of them. Trump's sending 800 members of the military to cover that whole border. Yeah, they're going to have these boys to help them. They will. But there's not going to be enough. Those borders are so porous. Those fences aren't even good enough to hold cattle. People are going to walk right around them. Gang, this is going to be a real mess. This is going to be bad. Because I can guarantee that the people... I, I'm hearing call-outs from the militias already. Already. And it's a week away. The militias are calling for people to go to the border to defend the country. There is a call-out in California. Now, if our president was serious about all of this, the first act he would do would be to arrest Jerry Brown and have the California National Guard take control of the border there. I haven't seen it happen. Those people are going to come across that California border and into the country because Jerry Brown's going to let them in. I don't think that our government's serious about doing anything about it. I think if anyone does anything about it, it's going to be the people. It's going to be you and me and our neighbors. Because I don't think that the government's dedicated. I think that no matter who is in the White House, it doesn't matter. He may talk a great game. He may impress a lot of people at the rallies. But by his fruit, he will be judged. Sorry, gang. 
All I see is rotten apples there. But we'll find out, won't we? We will find out. We'll see what happens. No matter what happens, you better be ready. No matter what happens, you better repent. You better get right with God, your Creator. Get your family right. Get your house in order. Quit being so lazy. That's all it is, is laziness. And you're really going to kick yourself when you're sitting in line to go to hell. You're really going to kick yourself. You say, man, that brother Chris, that used to, I, I used to catch him on YouTube once in a while. I'd just see him, and I'd, I'd listen to some of what he said. And he was, he's just kind of nutty. I, I never really much listened to him. But he was right. Now I'm standing in line, headed down the highway to hell. Hmm. Or Zeppelin's Stairway to Heaven. It's the same line. Just Led Zeppelin tried to buffalo everybody into thinking that they're going to heaven. Nope. Unless if you repent, and you declare Jesus Christ your Savior and ask for forgiveness of your sins, and you form a relationship with Jesus Christ, and you start praying, you start talking to Him about what's going on in your life, and you start waiting for guidance. Pay attention to what we're studying. Go back in the archives. Go back to all the playlists. Pick out some other ones. Yeah, there's some in there that there's some pretty good rants. There's some in there that there's a lot of politics. And there's some in there that are pretty angry. No more. The anger's gone. Disgust. Yeah, yeah, I got some disgust. I'm pretty cynical. And there's a lot of disgust because I'm sick of society. Our, cities, our society makes me sick to my stomach because... Everyone is so weak. So weak. All these feminized men, all these feminazi women, and all the sodomites and the lesbians and all these people that are just so lost. Don't end up in line with them. Don't do it. What? It is a personal choice, isn't it? It's a personal choice. Your choice. Your choice. Right there. Right there. It's your choice. You get to choose. Do I continue on the path that I'm on? Hey, Ethel, hand me the remote. Where's the beer? It's Sunday. I'm waiting for the, the football game. Yeah, that football game. Where's my nachos? Or are you going to change your direction? It's up to you. Personal choice. Form a relationship with Jesus Christ. He'll guide you. I guarantee he'll guide you. And you better get ready. Time's short. you got a lot to do. You got to get food. You got to get water. You better go out to the range and pull a few rounds. You better get ready. Well, gang, I'm probably going to end up with about one view on YouTube. I'm doing a lot better, though, over on Brideon. I, I'm, I'm actually attracting quite a crowd over there, but I'm not being censored over there either. That'll be uh, one group of folks that I'll be looking for in that line to hell. Zuckerberg and company. Bunch of Satanists. Bunch of child molesters. Speaking of child molesters, check out Blackstone Intelligence YouTube channel. Jake Marfonios. He covered the Las Vegas uh, shooting. 
check out his new series. He's doing a so I'm I'm on part eight right now. They're in my like videos. If you look at my like videos, all eight parts are in my like videos right now on YouTube. Go through them. Talks about the child trafficking and the Catholic Church, how it's involved, and the politicians, how they're involved, and the elitists, how they're involved, and how all of these Satanists, Beelzebub, use these children in child sex, in sacrifices, in all kinds of stuff. It's sickening. It's really sickening. But it's a really good documentary. So check out Jake Morphonios, Blackstone Intelligence. Okay? All right, gang. That's all I got for today. I know we're running a little bit late because I had a lot to say. I'm not yelling. I'm not ranting. Well, maybe a little rant. This is important. This is important. You might not like me, and I don't care. I don't care if you like me or not. You better listen to the message. Eternal life or eternal damnation. Your choice. Think about it. Y'all have a good week. Be safe. Love your neighbor. Love your family. Keep them close. There's some bad things coming this way. You better be ready. God bless, and I'll see you all later. All right? Bye.